It is Monday, January 31st in the NBA, and I'm back with my four best picks of the day. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot. Let's get into a recap from yesterday. Our best bit of the day cash is with Nikola Vucevic over 10 and a half rebounds, making us look pretty smart. As I said, he'd get 12 to 14 rebounds. Now, who didn't make us smart? Uh, Sadiq Bey and the Bucks. What the heck was that? Sadiq Bey puts up 31 points. We took his under, and the Bucks get absolutely boat raced. But that's been that's been betting in the NBA the past couple weeks. We'll continue to track on. If you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. We appreciate it. We got eight games on the slate today, so we had a lot to choose from. Although not really a lot to choose from, as a lot of the Bucks were just still sleeping in on a on a, um, sun, a Monday morning. But either way, maybe they were watching the NFL playoff games. Can't blame them. We're gonna push the past like week behind us. Although I still think it was about an even week overall because we started the week hot, just ended the week pretty bad. But either way, we're going to keep pushing on. Let's end the month strong and start February off with a bang. We got some bills to pay in the, on the first of the month, so let's get into it. Now let's get into the best bit of the day, which is on a 35-13 and 13 run, 73% since December 10th. Hopefully we can keep that going. Hopefully we can bring that success, success to the rest of the program. Our best bit of the day, drum roll please. R.J. Barrett, over 20 and a half points, minus 116 on FanDuel. Now, there's normally one rule I have, and that is don't bet on the New York Knicks or a New York Knicks, but here we are breaking that rule because I like what I've seen out of R.J. Barrett recently. Now, you never know what the Knicks is. Tom Thibodeau is completely unpredictable with his run, with his rosters and whatever he, what lineups he chucks out there, but normally R.J. Barrett's a part of those lineups. Now, R.J. Barrett, let's look at his game log over his last four games. 23, 17, 24, and 28 points. Hitting the over pretty easily in three of those five, four games. And you look at the one miss he had, he played less than 30 minutes, and it was a 24, I believe he played 24 minutes exactly, and the Knicks got absolutely boat raced by the Miami Heat. So, can't blame him for that one, although the Knicks starting lineup, he was a part of it, and I think his plus minus was minus 36. Nice work. Now, if you look at it today, I don't anticipate them getting boat raced by the Sacramento Kings, if they do... Uh, whatever. That's just that's just betting in the NBA, but I don't see that happening. Now, if you look at R.J. Barrett's recent game log, I mean, what is what has changed? He's just become more aggressive. He's been attacking the rim, averaging 16 drives per game over his last four games, compared to just 10 drives per game the rest of the season. Now, he's been aggressive trying to get, into, get to the rim and score, and that's what he did all last game. I believe he had 17 or 18 drives against the Bucks. Now, he struggled to finish. He shot 6 for 20 from the field, but he still hit this over in points because of 20 shot attempts. He was aggressive trying to score. Now, granted, you look at the Bucks great rim protection. Sacramento Kings don't have that today. Now, if you look at the Kings over the last 15 games, they've allowed the second most points overall per game in the NBA, and they've allowed the most points in the paint per game in the NBA the overall this season, a full two points more than every other single team, and they've even allowed more the past three games. Now, RJ, when he's able to drive and finish, he's going to continue to hit this over, over, and over again. This is a guy that you know, normally when he gets into a groove, it's hard to get him out of it. The Kings play at a fast pace as well, the third, sixth fastest pace in the NBA. Tyrese Halliburton, who knows if De'Aaron Fox is back today. But either way, don't think it matters. You look at RJ, he doesn't play the Kings. Obviously, they're both in separate conferences. But in the two games he's played the Kings in his career, when he has shot 15 or more times, which he's been hitting very consistently, he's had 21 and 22 points hit in both games. I like R.J. Barrett, he should play his normal complement of minutes. Should be a faster paced game for the King or for the Knicks than against this Kings team. So we should see R.J. scoring a little bit more in transition. We're taking us over 20 and a half points is my best bet of the day. Now let's move on to spread picks, which I've been really cold lately. It's, if I make it an official play like this one, it's probably an L. But we're going to get into this one. Taking the Cavs first quarter spread now. I don't necessarily have a line for this one. Right now, the only line I see is on points bet at minus one and a half or minus 130 odds. Don't really want to pay a juiced amount for a spread like this. Now, the Cavs are eight and a half point favorites on majority of books today as they take on the Pelicans. And we'll see how exactly up they do with the line that I'm going to take down below. You'll see that's a common theme throughout today's video. But still, I don't really want to play a ton of juice. I'll take the minus one and a half, minus 130 if I have to, but I just don't want to take that. Now, we'll look at yesterday. Like a lot of spread favorites, the Cavs laid an egg. They lost, I believe they're six and a half point favorites. They lost outright by 10 points to the Detroit Pistons. Now, Rajon Rondo, obviously a longtime NBA veteran, he came out and said that this team got a little bit too high on themselves. They were, you know, they were so high. They beat the, the Bucks on a, the reigning NBA champions. They were like, wow, we might actually be, you know, a great NBA team. Well, I think they are that. They thought a little bit too high of themselves. And what the past Pistons came and humbled them. They said, hey, welcome to the NBA. This is the NBA. Any team can win on any given night. And of course, they beat them outright by 10 points. Now, despite losing that game, the Cavs still were up five points after Q1, and they've been a great Q1 team 
all season long. In fact, they are 34 and 16 against the spread in the first quarter this whole season. The best in the NBA by a large margin. Now we look at their quarter one margins and we look at the Pistons or the Pelicans on the other hand, where they're playing today, the Pelicans are 21 and 26 against the spread. Near the bottom of the league, I believe like seventh or eighth worst. Now we look at their quarter one margin, like how many points they're leading or down by at the end of first quarter. Cavs, not a surprise after you heard they're the best against the spread in the Q1. They also lead the league in first quarter margin at plus 3.3 points per game. Now the Pelicans seventh worst at minus 1.6 points per game. And then the now the Pelicans who knows who's playing for them today. They got Josh Hart, they got Brandon Ingram and Jonas Valančiūnas all questionable for today's game. I imagine Jonas Valančiūnas returns as he's been due, due to illness, but who knows with Ingram or Hart, which are obviously obviously two of their three best players on this team. I don't think it really matters. I think the Cavs come out and play hot today. I think they got to after after that disappointing loss yesterday against the Pistons, they're going to play out and play fired up. Now, I think that's going to be led by Darius Garland and their defense. As the defense gave up 115 points to the Pistons yesterday. Although like I said, they were leading by 5 after Q1. So I think the Cavs are at home. They'll play off that energy and they'll bounce back and get a win. You look at the Cavs, they have played pretty well this season at home, 15 and 9, straight up overall. So I think they can get this done. My expectation is the Cavs play pretty great in the first quarter and at least win this quarter by at least two points, hopefully three or four, depending on the line we take. We'll see exactly what we pin, what we pin down below. So definitely go check that out. Let's talk about two other leans. And like I said, while, why, they're, why they are leans is because the sports books as of 6.15 a.m., they're sleeping. They're, they're sleeping in after the NFL playoff games yesterday. They just haven't been releasing a lot of lines. So let's talk about two guys. DeMontis Sabonis over and rebounds. Now, I'll likely lean towards his rebounds or rebounds plus assists. And that here's why. Now, Sabonis been an absolute tear the past couple games, taking on the LA Clippers. Now, Sabonis has basically been the only big man for the Indiana Pacers. He's basically all they got trotting out there, and he's been putting up crazy rebound lines. He had 16 and 18 rebounds his past two games. And he's just, like I said, he's the only big man out there. And last game was without, he only played 29 minutes. He was in foul trouble and he got, just wasn't a great game against the Mavericks as they got blown out in that one. Now, I lean towards his rebounds plus assist line. And here's why, because he's basically been running the offense the past couple games. He had a triple double a couple nights ago. He had 11 rebounds and seven assists in that last game. And he, well, he had 11, seven, 11 and seven against the Clippers the last time these two teams played just a couple games ago. And look, Goga Badatze played a much bigger role in that game than I anticipate he plays today. I believe he almost, play, almost played 30 minutes off the bench. Now, he has been injured the past couple games, so who knows if he even plays but I can't imagine he gets the same workload that he got in that last game against the Clippers with 30 plus minutes. He stole a lot of those rebounds from Sabonis. Uh, why? Because I had his over that night. So I know exactly why uh, you saw Sabonis not hit his over in rebounds. So either way, this is a, this is a Clippers team on a back-to-back. -back. Might play a little bit bad. I think this game is close all the way down to the wire. And look, he's feasted on this Clippers team in the past. A team that's been giving up a ton of rebounds per game to opposing big men. I think Sabonis will be the next guy that gets all those rebounds. And he's, like I said, he's the only big man for this Pacers team that's grabbing rebounds. So obviously I'll let you guys know down below exactly what line I play for Sabonis. I'm sure it will be juiced because that's what the sports books do. They're, wa they're just waiting for the, that's why they don't have lines. They're waiting for the videos to come out and they're like, all right, Austin likes this one. Let's juice it up a point or two. So either way, I like Sabonis today. I think he fills up the stat sheet, rebounds, and assist-wise, maybe even sprinkle that triple-double. So moving on to my last one of the day, and it is a man, a rookie, Josh Gideon. I'm leaning over in assists, but I also like his rebounds and assist line. It's the problem is I don't have the lines because today the OKC Thunder are taking on the Portland Trailblazers. And if you do not know, now you know. Shea Gildress Alexander is out today and will be out for the next couple several, several weeks after the All-Star break. So might not even return until the end of February, if that. He's got a significant ankle sprain. So Giddy is going to be asked to take a bigger step up and lead this offense. Now, you look at them, they got Lou Dort, they got Darius Baisley, they got all these other guys, but they need Giddy to lead the, lead the lineup. And the last time SGA was out, January 2nd, well, Josh Giddy had a triple-double, 13 rebounds and 14 assists against a very good Mavericks defense. Now, you look at the other two games in which Josh Giddy played without SGA, seven rebounds and eight assists, and seven rebounds and eight assists, which is why I lean towards that assist line, because I cannot imagine it's higher than seven and a half. Imagine it being around six and a half, if, if we're lucky, but you never know what the books. But look, Josh Giddy's going to have to lead this offense. Shouldn't expect them to get blown out by a porous Blazers defense on a back-to-back, -back, or just lost by 15 to 20 points to the Bulls, allowing DeMar DeRozan to have 11 assists or something like that. And DeMar DeRozan, 
despite him being pretty a very good player, I think Josh Giddey's a little bit of a better passer than DeMar DeRozan, although DeRozan has a lot more games under his belt in his NBA career. Either way, I like Josh Giddey to get, keep it going today. He's been pretty good this whole season long, especially when he's given the opportunity, and I expect him to have a pretty good game today. So I'll update you guys again down below in the pinned comment. Sorry we don't have a lot of official plays at this moment as you watch on this video early in the morning, but definitely go check out that comment down below because that'll update you with exactly the lines I'm playing because the books are sleeping in, but we are not. We're going to keep getting after it. I appreciate you guys for tuning into the video. If you have any podcast questions, let me know down below. Podcasts we're filming tomorrow. So we appreciate you guys. If you did enjoy the video, consider hitting that subscribe button. Click that like button too, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everyone.